Hey there, baseball fans. It's Ben, and I'm back today opening one of the iconic sets from 1980s Junk Wax era, 1988 Tops. Iconic not because of how awesome it is, but kind of because how bland it is. So, 88 was kind of a rough year for cards in general because a dearth of uh, rookie cards. You know, Tom Glavin's kind of the one that everybody's looking for generally. Um, 88 Donruss is one of the worst sets of all time. 88 scores, not much better. 88 Tops, frankly, is not much better. Um, so I've got two rack packs and a jumbo, which is super fun because I'm used to wax, pack, wax packs with these, as uh, you, you might imagine. Um, but having two wax packs is fun. We do have the glossy all stars in these, and Don Magley is on both of these. So um, we've also got a uh, glossy rookie uh, card in this one, which I don't know who it is yet, but we're going to find out. Mostly what I'm going to be looking for here are some of my favorite players Sean Dunstan, Nolan Ryan, Mark Grace, Ryan Sandberg. Um, I'd also just love to get some of those record breaker cards that have the red, all red background. Specifically, I love anytime I pull that Mark McGuire with the little white triangle next to his foot, which I've pulled a handful of times uh, throughout my life, including when I was a kid. So um, it'd be fun to find something like that, too. But here we go. Let's find out what we get. Also, that owl lighter is always fun to pull to see if we get the, the real owl or not. Oh, look at that. There's a record breaker right there. Vince Coleman. And even better, we get a Nolan Ryan turn back the clock right after that. Fantastic. Look at that. So I'm super excited about that. And we get Jay Baller with the world's greatest chest hair and gold chains. <laughs> I mean, he thought, you know, this is just a really good way to go. Um, I just don't know what to say about this picture. So yeah, there you have that. And there's Dwight Gooden All-Star. So we'll put that aside too. All right, so really a pretty good start. With that Nolan Ryan that I can add to my personal collection. I've got a handful of those already, but it never hurts to add another one. So really excited whenever I pull somebody who's my favorite. If we pull Sean Dunstan out of here, I know exactly what this card looks like because I've got a, probably two dozen of them. Look at that. Damaso Garcia. I just love the way he wears his hat in this one. <laughs> Very 80s. Tim Wallach. George Bell. Jorge Bell. There's Dave Winfield, Hall of Famer. Doing all right. Put him aside. And looks like this cell, we might actually have a the rare double Don Mattingly. So we've got his all-star, glossy all-star card here. Polly Pax is jealous, I'm sure. Fernando Valenzuela, there he is. And then, I think we might, oh, there's the Ken Caminiti rookie that um, I don't have a whole lot of love for him, but, you know, could have if he would have just stayed clean. There's Paul Molitor. That's interesting, you know, there isn't backlash against Paul Molitor, and he had a pretty disastrous personal life and abuse problem as well, but just not performance enhancing drugs. So he didn't cheat, I guess, is the whole point. Dale Murphy, big time player, and Don Mattingly, which actually is, that's one of the better cards in the set. Just, it's, it looks great. They just did a great job with the composition, with the photo, with how they laid it out. So put that aside too. So two Don Mattingly's in the same cell of that one. Very nice. Uh, let's jump over to the Jumbo Pack just for fun. Jumbo Pack is a different kind of thing. It's, it's not a, the same as a cello pack. It's actually double of, of what that would be. And I know that some people call them cello packs, but cello because it's wrapped in cellophane. That's where the cello comes from. It's not the instrument cello. Let's see what we can pull out of this one now. Oops. A lot of cards in here. So 45 on each side, I think. There's a Kirby Puckett, all-star. Not the greatest picture of Kirby. Looks like he's kind of confused by what's happening. But John Wathan wearing a batting helmet despite the fact that he's the manager. That's strange. Cecil Fielder looking pretty skinny before he headed over to Japan. Reinvented himself and became the home run slugger that he was.
Look at that, Andre Dawson, the Hawk. Put that aside. We've got a lot of All-Stars in this. Alan Trammell, another Hall of Famer. A lot of All-Stars in these packs. There's Pete Rose, the manager. I don't know where you guys all fall on the spectrum of Pete Rose, love or hate, but I mean, there's no doubt he was a great ball player, and I love somebody who builds his... Uh, career on hustle, you know? Just wish that he would make better ethical choices. There's Lou Whitaker. Another star for the Tigers there. Kent Takuve with his signature aviator sunglasses. As you know, one of my favorites that I learned about through this process of uh, the what was the coveted Nat, Matt Noakes rookie card. Then he turned out to not be so great. And Fred McGriff. Another card I remember from my childhood quite a bit. All right. Moving on to our second cell of this jumbo pack. Oh no, I'm losing my gum. Losing my pieces of gum. I mean, as much as I love the wax, which is why I call this channel Wax Packs, the cards that come out of these tops, eras, out of these cellophane packages are so much nicer. They're just not wrecked the same way wax packs are. So Luis Polonia is our glossy rookie card here. So not too exciting. Could have been a lot better people. Quite a duo there with Fred McGriff and Jorge Bell. There's Kevin Mitchell, looking airbrushed as anything in that picture. Oh, there's a Greg Maddox. That's a nice card. It's always a Greg Maddox fan when he pitched for the Cubs, and although I know he had his best years at the uh, on the Braves, he'll always be a Cub to me. Oh, a double Rangers leaders card. Got one here too. Look at that. So if I've got two of them, that means there are only about 4,999,998 out there in the wild for that card. There's Tony Gwynn, base card. Look at all of those league leaders and hits and runs and at-bats. And the average, I mean, he hit 370 in 1987. 351 in 84. That is out of this world. In case you ever forgot how great he was. There you go. There's Mike Schmidt. Slugging third baseman for the Phillies. That's a good one. There's Mike Greenwell, which again was a coveted rookie card at the time. Although I think he had an 87 card, so it's not really his rookie. I don't know why Topps always does this uh, all-star rookie thing when they're actually not rookies anymore. They do the same thing for Mark McGuire. Oh, look at that Cal Ripken. Not the world's greatest photographer here. Robin Young, that's another good one. Two right in a row. Followed by Tim Raines, Hall of Famer. Which is another good one. And that's the end of that one. All right, so we've got just the rack pack left. Let's see what we can pull out of this one. Maybe we can find uh, another one of those cards I was looking for, a record breaker or something. Or even just a Sean Johnson or Ryan Sander would make me happy. Or Nolan Ryan. There's Tom Lasorda. And he is a Hall of Fame manager as well. So we'll pull him, pull him aside as a Hall of Famer. Jim Rice. Turn back the clock. There's that Eddie Murray record breaker for his switch hitting power. That's a good little cell there. That's Dwight Gooden. You know, who had his first few years in the major majors are kind of unsurpassed. I mean, that is just remarkable. If only he could have held it together and 
I got influenced by the bad demons inside. All right, and into our last cell, which we know contains at least a Don Mattingly. Let's see what we can do this one. It's all about finesse when opening these cello packs. All right, so there's our Don Mattingly. This one actually feels like it's... Yeah. Just looking at the top here, it's like... It's crammed in there from a design standpoint. It's kind of a mess. Wally Joyner. Whatever happened to that guy? Let's put him aside and look him up. There's Vince Coleman. Alan Trammell, Hall of Famer. So really, it's just pretty good stash here. I mean, like, again, not a great set, but quite a few cards in here that really are Good players and interesting. Let's take a look at old Wally Joyner. See whatever happened to him. Played for 16 years. Part of 1998 San Diego Padres. So, hit 289, 204 home runs, 1100 RBIs. Mostly for the Angels, Royals, Padres, Braves, and Angels. All started in 1986. Dubbed Wally World. Okay. Back to the Angels. Went to the Royals, etc., etc. Retired. Um, he ha oh, okay. 2005, he revealed he briefly used steroids. Age of 36, he went to Ken Caminetti and asked how to get steroids and took them. Took three of them, decided not to continue and flushed them down the toilet. Good for him for setting the record straight and coming out with that. Um, and, you know, I certainly don't respect him for taking them, but I do respect him for stopping and for coming clean. So, so good for him for that. You know, everybody makes mistakes. So he's a hitting coach. Phillies assistant hitting coach. All right. Lives in Utah now. And, oh, so he's a uh, Jesus... Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, also known as the Mormons. And a few movies there. It's interesting. So he's a bit of a movie and entertainment star for uh, the Mormons and living in Utah after being a, a hitting coach and much of a baseball lifer. So interesting uh, background there for Wally Joyner. So there you go. Wally Joyner. Who knew? I guess I'll see you guys next time.